Welcome to the Thinking Practitioner Podcast, a podcast where we dig into the fascinating issues, conditions, and quandaries in the massage and manual therapy world today. I'm Whitney Lowe. And I'm Till Luca. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Thinking, Thinking Practitioner. Practitioner. Books of Discovery have been part of massage therapy education for over 20 years. Thousands of schools around the world teach with their textbooks, e-textbooks, and digital resources. Books of Discovery likes to say, learning adventures start here. They see that same spirit here on the Thinking Practitioner podcast, and they're proud to support our work, knowing we share the mission to bring the massage and bodywork community enlivening content that advances our profession. Check out their collection of e-textbooks and digital learning resources for pathology, kinesiology, anatomy, and physiology at booksofdiscovery.com, where Thinking Practitioner listeners can save 15% by entering thinking at checkout. Alicia, it's so good to have this time with you. Thanks for joining me here on the podcast. Welcome. I'm happy to. Thanks for inviting me. Sounds good. Let's see. Well, I'm sitting outside and I live actually not in Boulder. I live um, outside of Boulder up in the mountains. And uh, that's a big part of my life is, is um, being close to nature in various ways. That's great. That's great. No, you live up in a spectacular part of the environment outside of Boulder. The other side of Boulder than me, I live eight miles or so east. You live west. Mm-hmm. It's good to be talking across this uh, place we live. So let's, I mean, let's just get a little context before we get into the meat of it. What is contact improvisation? No, it has never been um, defined like with a codified defined. Um, So each person is going to have a slightly different definition. So I'll share my definition, which is um, two or more people in physical contact uh, with one another and improvising and using the physical forces of gravity um, and momentum. A lot of listening is happening in the moment through the what's called the point of contact where the touch is happening, could be as small as a, a fingertip or or it could be somebody's body supporting another person's body's weight fully, entirely on their back or their shoulder. Um, And so you're using the physical forces to improvise. Um, And it's a dance form. Is that fair? It's a dance. Yes, it's a dance form. Yes. Okay. Is, Is it a performance dance form or a personal practice or a mindfulness practice or all of the above? Where's Right. All of the above for some people, uh, some people perform and some people never perform and do it just as a personal practice. Uh, For some people, it's like a really a physical practice. Others, it's a a practice to interact with other people. Um, For some, it's more of a like a meditative practice. So or a combination of any of those. Uh, For for me, it's all of them. Yeah. (laughs) And, and it's think, a lot, and it's a lot of fun too. It's a lot of fun too. Yeah, I think um, you know, body work isn't so much a performance. The hands-on body work isn't a performance modality in most cases, although I feel like that sometimes when I'm teaching. But the rest of what you said, I, I think, has some pretty clear analogies in what we do with our right like that. 
And so that's what I'm interested in talking about. But before we get into that, how did you, what's your journey around this? How did you get into this? What about it spoke to you? How did you get involved with it? I was introduced to it in 1989, so 34 years ago. A um, friend of mine said, hey, there's this thing. I never heard of it. I took a class. Um, anyway, that was the beginning. And one thing unfolded to the next, and I just, I still love it. You know, 34 years later, I still love dancing and exploring. Uh, but that's a little bit of my journey. That's great. Mm-hmm. And you have uh, other kinds of practices and work you do too, like we mentioned in your bio. Uh, does it inform those? Is there a is there a continuity somehow between the contact and the other things you do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, in different ways. For example, the yoga, because it's a solo practice. Uh, Often I'll work with a theme in in my contact improvisation classes and apply that to yoga or vice versa. Um, And then with more of the somatic psychotherapy or life coaching, um, that really shows up in contact because it's a relational practice. Um, The self and other awareness and the listening skills that happen um, can be directly applied uh, to the somatic psychotherapy and life coaching and contact. So. I reconnected with uh, contact improv and with you just in the last year or so after not having done it since the 80s, basically. Not Ooh. much of it since the 80s. And it, it reminded me when I came back and went to your classes, it reminded me how influential that was for me as a person, but also as a body worker developing my own work and my own uh, way of being. And um, it's been a great touchstone to go back and just remember some of these fundamental concepts and how congruent they are with what we do on the table. And especially, you know, stylistically for me personally, how influential they they have been and how they keep appearing as well. Right. And as a teacher, I mean, you you uh, you rightly have this reputation as a masterful teacher here in the area and internationally. And as another teacher, just being in your classes, I just really wanted to appreciate and honor you and the, the space you hold and the way you construct and progress through things that are um, not always easy to sit down and teach or explain, but you well, managed to facilitate and create the container and the space for people to for us to find those. As well. well. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's always an ongoing process, <laughs> how to how to share share things that um, you know really resonate for oneself and try to make it a way that's tangible and accessible for other people. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's one thing to embody them or work on them ourselves, and then another thing to help whether it's our students or our clients, et cetera, find those things for themselves as well. Right. Right. Okay. So. What what do we mean by contact? Is that is that basically the touch? Is that the same as physical touch? Well, in contact improvisation, I would say the physical contact is key, although you can have a contact improvisation dance where you might come out of physical contact. But I would say if you never come into contact with each other physically, yeah. it's Probably, I would call it dance improvisation, not contact improvisation. Okay. So contact refers to the physical touching, probably, within that form. How is that significant, or how do you think about it as a teacher, or what is there to know about the fact that we're in physical contact in that in that context? Well, there's, there's many things. Um, one, it's touch. Uh, you know, touch is a primary sense, and um, touch is something that humans need um, from, you know, when we're first born. Um, so, and it's a way of communicating that is different than communicating with words. So, in this form, we learn to listen through touch and communicate through touch. That's one of the aspects. Yeah. Yeah. 
one of the interesting things for me as a student there has been um, to you. I mean, we're we're I'm touching, and it's a very different context, of course. It's a dance context as opposed to a bodywork context. It's a partnered context as opposed to a client therapist context. Mm. Uh, and the two-way piece, though, uh, isn't that different in some mm -hmm. way. Because mm -hmm. I still think of myself as listening to my client or listening to my partner. Right. I'm still offering tact, you know, uh, tangible kinesthetic or pressure ideas or suggestions, right. possibilities. Yeah. I'm still listening to hear how they're taken up or not. Uh huh. Right. Thing around that. Right. And it's um, you know, I imagine with body work, it's more you you are the one who touches, and the other is receiving the touch. There's that. Um, contact improvisation. It's it's going both ways. Yeah. 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 Which has been. Uh, a great stretch for me as a mover and as a body and as a person. And it makes me reflect a lot on the one-way nature of the relationship and body work, how we, most of us want it to be more reciprocal. We want the two-way communication. Mm. And it's given me a great laboratory to come in and actually play and practice with uh, how is it when, when we're, you know, when we're peers, moving partners, moving together, how is it that, that happens? What happens when I lean and try something? How do they respond? Mm. And uh, it's the 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 context where my partner is moving from what feels right for them, hopefully mm -hmm. purely, right, opposed to what trying to trying to go with some therapeutic agenda, maybe is a very different one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know the other the other. Big difference. Well, I mean, what we're talking about touch is uh, that I'm not just using my hands mm. in contact improvisation. How is it? I mean, is it fair to say that contact improvisation is like soccer? You can't touch the ball with your hands. You mean with your hands? Um, well, we do use our hands because our hands are so intelligent and sensitive yeah. and articulate. Um, and here's the dog <laughs> falling off. I don't know if that's distracting. No, no he's welcome. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, so we try to, in contact improvisation, that kind of sensitivity that we have in our hands, we try to cultivate that in the entire body. Okay. Yeah. That's, I haven't heard you say that, but that's, that's what I am experiencing. Yeah. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. And so for, yeah, most of us, we use our hands. We use our hand in every day, you know, to pick up things, to carry things, to touch people with our hands. Um, but yeah, to learn how to wake up the touch receptors in the rest of our body. So to receive the touch and then also to respond to respond with movement, to respond, uh, to ask questions, to be curious with other parts of our body. So like the shoulder, for example, the shoulder might be a question or a suggestion uh -huh. or uh, an idea that we present. Right. So we're using our hands in body work. We're using our bodies in contact improvisation. What are we feeling for? In contact improvisation what do we yeah where's our perception what are we right so one fundamental aspect of contact improvisation is that we're feeling for the ground through our partner yeah so in that and it could be so there's ground and rebound just like when we're standing or walking you know otherwise if there's only ground we would collapse but we use the support of the ground in order to open to space, to move through space, okay. expand into space. Yeah. I mean, we're doing that all the time. You know, you could sit in the chair and collapse, or you could sit, you reach down in order to sit up. So in contact improvisation, 
we're using that same principle, but with another person so that we feel through our own skeleton the ground, but we're also sharing uh, the ability to sense ground through each other skeleton. Okay. I'm not yeah. in my head because I know what you mean. Yeah. But that sounds really kind of esoteric and abstract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually very unesoteric, even though it's, it may sound like it is. It's yeah. very concrete. And, um, I mean, for example, uh, because I'm sitting in this chair and the chair is connected to the ground, to the, to the deck. Yeah. Which is connected to the ground. So that allows me to have support so I can rise up into it. I'm not just floating in the air. Uh, okay. So if this were a partner, it's the same thing. Like the skeleton of the chair um, is helping support me. Um, um, so it's very, it's very physically based, uh, that level of awareness. So we're always feeling through each other to feel the ground, but that amount of weight could be, you know, quite light. It could be a lot of, a lot of weight or anything in between. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the weight comes more in a horizontal direction or like an A-frame direction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be you're vertical showing us, weight. You're showing yeah. us with your hands. So for, yeah. so for the listeners, like fingers touching just tips or uh, one hand resting on another, like a T. Yeah, it could be either one of those models. Huh? Mm -hmm. Right. You, uh, I mean, as you were describing your chair there, I started to feel that in my own body. And I'm realizing we're talking about this but I think there's an implicit invitation here to be feeling this too, as we're talking about it, to the people yeah. listening. Yeah. Well, you want to say anything about that? Can you can you give us a? Yeah. So when we're solo, which I imagine most of the listeners are solo right now, yeah. you're not touching somebody, um, but you are in contact with the earth always, whether you're outside directly in contact with the earth or inside and laying on the floor. Or, inside and sitting in a chair or couch or whatever, somehow you're getting support from the earth, either directly or through, you know, through the building, through the floor, through the furniture. Um, so we don't think about it because it's, it's so fundamental to our existence, gravity is. We don't have to think about it. In contact improvisation, we, you, we are we are paying attention to that because we're being relational with another moving body. So two moving bodies in relationship to the earth. And the more that both people attend to um, the easy and fluid alignment of their body so that the physical forces of gravity move through the structure in the most easeful way, and you're doing that together, co-creating it together. That is um, using the forces of gravity mm -hmm. as as part of the play, but we're not ignoring gravity. It's like a, an essential part of the practice. You, as I listen to you, I just you're making me aware of how I'm leaning on my elbow here on my desk and feeling. Uh, the desk, but also feeling the ground, the floor, the support of that from underneath. And then you're talking about alignment in easier ways. Helps me remember that it can be different if I find my, for example, my sit bones and feel into the chair and feel down to the floor. Mm -hmm. And we're, and you're saying in contact improv, we're doing it with and through a partner as well. Yes. Yes. And the truth is, in in hands-on manual therapy, we're doing that with our client as well. We get we we have our own base of support, and a lot of let's say the body use suggestions I make to people during a training have to do with their relationship to the floor, right, and right, right, and support. And we're touching another body, and whether it's you know firm pressure or really light pressure, there is a connection through mm -hmm. them to whatever they're lying on, et cetera. 
Mm -hmm. And so how to organize ourselves around that point of contact and the transmission of mechanical, physical gravity through that other body is a big part of the body use puzzle right. as well. Right, yeah. And I, I like the, way, the word puzzle because, you know, the way we're talking about it might sound kind of dry and mechanical, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's the basis for creativity because you, you create safety, it creates a feeling of connection, and then the nervous system can relax enough, and then the creative uh, aspects can open. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, what's possible in this puzzle, like this infinite That's puzzle? Right. Yeah. That's right. And some of the ways that you've broken it down for us in your classes have been really exciting for me as a body worker. Like, when the point, one of your phrases was, I'm going to paraphrase it, was, you know, when the point of contact moves, your your base, your support moves too. Yes. Of something you wait your relationship your spot on the floor changes as well your feet, right for example right and that is such a great practice sitting with a client or working with a client standing with a client whatever it is when we're working on just think if my if my hands are going to move my base needs to accommodate that so it's right. not just all arms or all upper body right the planted base in one spot right yeah then it's like the whole the whole body then is supporting and participating instead of just one part doing a lot of work where the other part is having to brace. So um, like the whole community, if you think it on like a macro level, like if there's a community and there's only three workers and there's 300 slackers, uh, those yeah. three workers are going to have to work really hard and they're going to be, there's going to be some strain. Whereas if everybody participates, the community is going to work better. So it's the same with the body. It's like if you let the whole body participate, so the point of contact or that touch uh -huh. is is how the whole body is participating, not just this part at the, you know, at the, the touch point. Of point of contact, right. How yeah. the whole body is supporting that, connecting yeah. to that. In relationship to gravity, in relationship to the earth. In relationship to the gravity in the floor. Yeah. All right. So that's some of the contact part of it. What about the improv part? Yeah, the improv. Um, I always think improvisation is, you know, if you would just have complete freedom, it's really hard to imp improvise. It's just there isn't enough of a container. So the container in context improvisation is this relationship to gravity and to the earth in, in the way I understand it and experience it. And so that's one thing that both people can keep attending to. But then out of that, um, it's really play. It's just, just co-creating because as soon as one person moves, that has an effect on the other person through, through the touch. And like we we're talking about, when that touch point moves, then the whole body reorganizes in relationship to gravity, in relationship to your partner. So both people are um, co-creating through through moving. Nice. And through play. Through play, yeah. 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 The, I mean, at some point, I exaggerate a little bit, but about 15 years into working I was so burned out that I needed to quit. Mm. I was just seeing so many clients and spending so much energy and time and focused on it that I got really just kind of fed up and mm -hmm. uh, had a kind of uh, motivational crisis around it. So I, I uh, again, the, the joke is that I did, I quit. I quit working so hard. I quit, you know, uh, pushing and just started playing, just started doing it for fun. And uh, that was, you know, I've been doing it 40 years now. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it became a lot more interesting just to play, right. just to find out what was interesting and fun and felt good to both of us. Right. And how to let that unfold and encourage that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. If you're not having fun, <laughs> it's not worth it. I mean, really. Yeah. Because uh, enjoyment... In it gives you energy and it's like the curiosity, the, the exploration, the unfolding, the unknown. 
I mean, that's what, yeah. If I was doing the same thing over and over in, in contact and improvisation, I'd be, I would have quit ages ago. Yeah. So, yeah. And there, the, I mean, play sounds like a fun way to do anything, but it's even taking a place for me as a therapeutic goal. Like, uh-huh. that's almost the point. Maybe it is. The right. Point. I remember right. one of my teachers, Arnie Mandel, getting really pressed by somebody on saying, what is your, he was a psychotherapist, but he was saying, what is uh-huh. your therapeutic goal? And he thought for a while, he says, actually, it's to get what he called positive feedback from my client and myself. That uh-huh. was what impact, what that meant. It meant like, yeah, the energy goes up, they get more interested, they're more engaged. Right. And they're more uh, with him and more with themselves in that process. Right. And, Honestly, I haven't thought of a better way to describe what feels right uh, as, as, as well. Yeah, I, the way you're describing makes me think it's like a, a mutual exploration that creates discovery over and over and over again. Yes. Um, and that part of like, I think when we're in that place of play or um, we we're open we're open to to life in a way more three dimensional way than when we're kind of like in a linear. We've got a goal. We've got to get it done. Uh, that narrow focus uh, can, yeah, limit us in a lot of ways. Yeah. And when we're in the playful place, it's like again. I think it's very much more three dimensional. Like anything's like anything's possible here. There's, I mean, I'm free associating a little bit, but I, and I know that uh, I'm just thinking of some of my uh, adventures in theater improv mm. with, say, Ruth Zipporah or other teachers teaching that form. And her, this isn't exactly what's meant in, in contact improv, but her thing, and it's not just her thing, was that we're looking for the yes. Yes, in, yes, in, yes. In, yeah, in the... Yeah. Right, right. And we're looking to to evoke that and find that and investigate that in ourselves as well as our partner. Right. Yeah. And a basic um, foundation of any improvisation, whether it's theater or, or dance, is is the yes. Yeah. And yes, and so, yeah. So you say you you embrace whatever is whatever's uh-huh. showing up. In the moment, whether it's an offer from your partner or you say yes in your energy, you, just, you embrace it. And the and is then you allow what is coming through you to come through you. Yeah. So that's that's how the, the, the back and forth happens. Yes, and. Yes, and. Yes. <laughs> and the the present moment it's happening in the present moment yeah which is foundational fundamental so clear when it's when we're there and so clear when we're not right did i i catch my partner's my clients yeses when i'm uh-huh. in the present moment yeah or i find my own as opposed to thinking ahead remembering backwards mm. uh uh-huh. It's, it's, I suspect that the present moment has a a place in your thinking or in the form you teach. Is that true? No, absolutely. I think that's why people do anything that they love. It's because it brings them into the present moment. Um, that is what is satisfying. Being in the present moment is incredibly satisfying. Yeah, that's what we're all looking for. I think on some level, right. is how to be really present, and um, so conduct improvisation is one way. And I think that's a big reason why many people choose to practice it. Last night in in class, you were we were working with the top of the head, and you said something at some point about uh, if you're in your head, you're in the past or in the future. I don't even know I heard you right. Was it something like that? Yeah. You know, I usually say things because I'm like looking around. And I'm seeing oh, right. what's happening. <laughs> Probably looking at me, but what? <laughs> no, I wasn't looking at you. But um, 
Yeah, like we can be in our thinking and planning part of our brain, yeah. which is important at times, uh, but not so helpful when we're wanting to be in the moment and respond and be available to what's happening in the moment. So, the, yeah, this invitation last night, we were working with the crown of the head as uh -huh. uh, rather being in the planning or the reminiscing about the past mm. uh, to actually be in the sensation at the very top of the head and in our imagination of uh, like if that part of our physical being could listen like our ears, but could listen to the uh, to the mystery of what's unfolding in the moment. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You brought me into my, your statement brought me into my own senses and my own sensation. It also started me on a little mental riff about the fact that the brain itself doesn't have sensation. Oh. That the brain doesn't feel touch, pressure, temperature, any of that. It's right. only tissues around it that do. Yeah. Brain tissue has no sensation. So I'm thinking, yeah, maybe what the brain is doing is all about something else. But the way we find the present moment is through those sensory signals, sensory right. experiences that are coming from elsewhere. Right. But of course, our scalp has sensation. Scalp you know? has lots of sensation. Um, so often, like people can do this right now, you can, you know, maybe do a math problem, you know, just and just notice if you were to identify where, where is there, where, where do you feel that happening in your head mm -hmm. versus if you bring your, awareness of sensation to the very top of the head. Yeah, the math problem somewhere between my ears, for sure. I don't know how much of that is concept and how much of that experience, but that right. the top of the head shifts it more like you're saying to the scalp, which is some yeah. layer. And then, of course, if we're, our awareness is in the back of the head, that's, that's also, or at the very base of the skull, that's a very different place in our brain. Uh, when our attention goes to a different place of our head, it uses a different part of our brain too. Yeah. Well, there's so much to the back of anything mm -hmm. because we're so frontally oriented that anytime I feel backwards, it can open up a whole uh, room back there. It'll open up a mm. whole uh, dimension of experience that I'm usually not paying attention to. Right, right. Yeah, especially on Zoom. <laughs> yes, anyway. that's for sure. That's for sure. We get so frontally camera oriented, oh, I know. screen oriented, whatever it is we're doing. But yeah, just to feel the back of my neck right now is just a great reminder. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned it, but I just wanted to underline it too. And that is the physical nourishment of touch. Just mm. the human experience of being in contact with someone else and how big a part of the manual therapy, massage therapy, body work effects that is, how much of it comes from just the physical contact. Yeah. Well, we're, we're creatures, we're animals, we're mammals. Yeah. Um, um, we're social creatures mm -hmm. um, that, that need touch. You know, it's like, it's a basic need. I mean, they, you know, the exper I can remember what the experiment is with, you know, the, the monkey that didn't get touched and the, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just a very basic need. Vitamin in our diet. Yeah. And, um, and yet it's, I don't know. Again, people do conduct improvisation for different reasons. Uh, for me, it's um, it's the co-creation that I do it for, mm -hmm. primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, the improvisation. Um, mm -hmm. I don't do it as like, oh, I need some touch. I'm going to go do contact. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. it's like a wonderful part of it, mm -hmm. but it's not like, I do it just for getting touch. Yeah. So I think that's 
there's some oh, people yeah. who who do that and and um you know that's that's their reason for doing this form and not really the dance part as a personal um, practice you could say yeah. yeah as a personal practice and for me it's really it is a it is a practice that is beyond like there's the personal and then there's a transpersonal and there's a transpersonal aspect about contact improvisation is when when you're in that creative zone where personalities dissolve and you're just in the flow of creation yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so it's not about getting your personal needs Be touch that. met <laughs> yeah right. yeah 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 no, we have the same richness and maybe the same considerations to as practitioners of body work because it's certainly an important ingredient in my diet to touch. Yeah. But it's not the place I look for my touch needs to be met, for example. Right. Right. And the humanness of what I offer is a big part of it. But again, it's not enough for all of what someone needs in their life as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to say about contact improvisation, body work, perhaps? Anything else before we wrap it up? Well, I'm excited about this workshop we're going to do in July. You and I are going to do a yeah. collaboration. Yeah. Going to try a, a dialogue, a conversation about how uh, correct me if I if you see it differently about how hands-on body work and contact improvisation might inform each other for people who do either or both. Right, and it will be very experiential. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, hmm. I'm just feeling into it right now. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm really, really curious and excited to see what unfolds from it. Yeah. Um for this this workshop that we're talking about, we're gonna focus on the legs. Uh-huh. Um, which for most of us most of the time is our connection to to the ground and to the earth. Right. You know? Yeah. You know, so of course it affects all other parts of our body. Yeah. Yeah. It does. And that's, I mean, the legs, there's so much there. And in terms of what I hope to uh, glean from my conversation with you, it, it, there is so much about the connection piece through the legs and the ways that feeling the earth with the legs or feeling through someone else's body through their legs is there. Mm -hmm. We'll see what I get. From my side, uh, there's so much technical detail too that helps us, could help us understand how that happens. Right. Uh, or joint mechanics, say, or basic shapes of the body anatomically. Right. Help participate in the, the function that legs give. And then how to use our hands or movement cues and suggestions into leading someone into a different relationship with their legs, whether their legs are comfortable or hurting, et cetera. That's how mm -hmm. they actually be able to have a different relationship with their legs and with connection to the earth through the legs. Right. Yeah, I like the the different relationship from both ends, like as a body worker, yeah. supporting somebody to have a different relationship with their legs. And then from um, like a dancer perspective of how the details of body work, the specificity of feeling, mm -hmm. feeling what you're touching. Mm -hmm. Um can also give give a dancer a, a different relationship with their leg, different in meaning more choices, more nuance, more specificity, more it's like having a whole array of tools instead of just one tool in your dance. So um right. I feel yeah. excited about that. Me too. And dancers are just really fun to work with. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just looking forward to playing and seeing what we yeah. discover and learn from each other. As yeah. Well as yeah. So that's July in Boulder. Maybe we'll do more if, if we... July 8th. July 8th. Thank you. Which is a Saturday in the afternoon. 
<laughs> one <Nice>. to five. <laughs> nice. That's all their circus. Mountain time. time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good. We'll put links to that in the show notes. Uh, and again, I hope to do more with you in the future. And certainly we'll put links to uh, how people can find out more about you. Do you want to say anything about your offerings, what people might want to know about that you're doing? Yeah. So my website is aliciagrayson.com. Mm-hmm. Also, embodyingessence.com will get you there too. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, I'm in a few days I'm going to Europe. I'll be teaching in Poland, uh, France, and Spain. And then I'm back in Boulder to do some weekly classes, this workshop with Till, a workshop on my land uh, with breath work and authentic movement. And then in uh, the latter half of August, early September, I'll be in British Columbia teaching on Salt Spring Island, uh, a two-week embodiment training. Incredible. Um, and then uh, Nelson, British Columbia, I'll be doing a couple workshops there, one for women, one uh, contact improvisation. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Well, we'll put, like I said, we'll put the links to all that on our show notes. Go check out what Alicia's up to. Come see us in July if you uh, can possibly make it. If people wanted to know more about contact improvisation uh, resources in their area, what would they search for? Where would they look? Do you have any tips about that? Yeah, there's a website called um, CI, that's contact improvisation, ciglobalcalendar.net. Oh. And so that is a global resource for classes, workshops, jams, um, you know, different offerings. Uh, you can also just Google contact improvisation and wherever you happen to be or live um, and see what comes up. Right. Yeah. And it's it's one of, one of the things I appreciate about it. It's one of those forms that the fundamentals are relevant all the time and that it's... Uh, you know, there are certainly different levels, but that there are such basic, important pieces there that a someone who has very little experience can gain something from it just by exposing themselves to it. Is that accurate? Am I... Yeah, I would say, yeah. Um, like there's some very basic principles that are ap- applicable, whether you've never, ever done any kind of dance or movement. <laughs> Mm-hmm. versus, you know, somebody who's been practicing for decades. So those same principles apply and they are accessible to really anyone who's willing to tune into their body and, um, yeah, be a creature on the earth that's <laughs> covered <go>. by gravity. <laughs> yeah. That's us. Well, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for the conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank Thank you. You. There's a creature. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kill. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. The Thinking Practitioner Podcast is supported by ABMP Associated Bodywork and Massage Professionals. ABMP membership gives professional practitioners like you a package including individual liability insurance, free continuing education and quick reference apps, online scheduling and payments with Pocket Suite, and much more. ABMP CE courses, podcasts, and massage and bodywork magazine. Always feature expert voices and new perspectives in the profession, like Whitney Lowe and myself. Thinking practitioners can save on joining ABMP at abmp.com slash thinking. Thanks to all of our sponsors, and please stop by our sites for the video, the show notes, the transcripts, and extras. Whitney's site is academyofclinicalmassage.com, my site advanced-trainings.com. If there are questions or things you'd like to hear us talk about, just email us at info at thethinkingpractitioner.com or look for us on social media at Till Luca or at Whitney Lowe. Please do uh, throw us a rating on Apple Podcasts. It only takes a second. There's a link on our uh, show notes page. It does help other people find the show and it helps the sponsors know that their money is well spent. Thanks to everyone who has left a review there. You can also hear us on Spotify, Stitcher, Audible, or wherever else you listen. And please do share the word and tell a friend. Thank you.